Van de Tocco Ross, nigga. Hi, the Grammy just passed. And god damn it, it sucks. What the fuck did I even expect? Like, was I even expecting anything? Were you even expecting anything? Because I sh- Hey. I don't think I expected anything. I expected it to be terrible once they even snubbed the weekend in the first place from all the Grammy nominations after the fucking smash hit of Blinding Lights. After that, I just knew it was gonna go downhill from there. So the Grammys finally did something that we haven't seen in a long time, an actual audience, but it wasn't that it wasn't that big. And it was only filled with the nominees. Hey, we're getting there. Honestly, I'm gonna be real I'm gonna be real straight with y'all. I didn't even watch the goddamn Grammys. I slept through that bitch like I didn't even know. It was even on that day either. And I also thank God I slept on it because shit, this this shit was bad. Just going over like the fucking winners like a day after and then rewatching it the whole way through and who. Let me just go over the winners real quick and then I'll get to the performances. I'll just get I'll just get to the fucking winners yet and then I'll get into what I think about the performances, which I I I can't wait to talk about. So we got album of the year. The winner I pick I think I picked I'm not sure. I think I picked. Fu I think I picked Future Nostalgia. I might have picked Future Nostalgia, but it wasn't the winner, and it was. Fo it went to Folklore by Taylor Swift, which I'm not mad because I love that album as well. I actually, I'm actually glad that album at least won over fucking Hollywood Bleeding or fucking Everyday Life. Like who the fuck even knew? Did you know that Coldplay even came out with an album this year or last year? Be honest. Did you know that they released an album this year, or last year? Cause I sure fucking didn't. Honestly, I would have loved to see Haim take it on with Women in Music part, part 3, but... Obviously, you know the Grammys. It's a good album. Then go on to Wreck of the Year. It went to Billie Eilish, Everything I Wanted, which is fucking stupid. Out of all the Billie Eilish songs, they decided to choose the one... One of her worst ones. Well, not one of her worst ones, but one of her most underwhelming ones, and one of her most mid-singles today and to see it win over fucking don't start now to see it win over fucking colors which i picked as the winner when i first listened to it while recording my picks and shit but yeah of course it would go to fucking billy eilish over over fucking black parade which is fucking crazy to me but you know so it's not, so another year another billy eilish suck off i knew, i knew it i fucking knew it you know when is it gonna stop? I don't know. I probably won't. And then she goes on this bullshit saying, "Oh, I didn't deserve this. I, I the other the other the other nominees' songs were so good. I mean, no, that shut the fuck up. Shut up. Enough with that. You said that last year. That does again. That doesn't change the fact that you won. It doesn't change the fact that you've won an award. Stop saying that shit. You can't tell me that was the first time she ever said that at the Grammys because she said that last year. All right. Nothing against Billie Eilish, but come on now. Shut the fuck up, please. And then on the song of the year. I'm actually surprised, but also pleased and relieved with this. I can't breathe by her, and during this meal, I don't know how to say his name. I'm actually, I'm actually happy with that one. You know, on a physicality, out of all the songs on there, thank God it didn't go to "If the World Was Ending." Yeah, it was a better written song, so it makes sense. It made sense. It's just a great song. I feel like it should have been nominated for Record of the Year as well. Could you hear the fucking production? Is insane. Best new artist. I don't even know who, I don't even remember who I even went with as my pick to win Best New Artist, but I already, I obviously knew off the bat that it was going to be Megan Thee Stallion, and it was Megan Thee Stallion, yeah. It was obviously, it was no way it was not going to be Megan Thee Stallion. She, even though I would have loved to see it go to fucking Chica or Phoebe Bridgers, but Kat, Ketron, Ketronada, why the fuck is he on this? I forgot, I forgot to say this, didn't it? Kishonata is not even new. Is this another Alicia Carr situation where this, this, they just say he's the best new artist, but he's been out here for fucking f fucking five years? Five years doesn't mean a new artist. Same with Noah Cyrus. She's, been out, she's not even new. Best pop solo performance went to Harry Styles with Watermelon Sugar. Thank God, thank God, thank God, and thank Hallelujah, Jesus, and then go to fucking Yummy by Justin Bieber. I, I fucking spilled water all over my dick, but anyway, thank God it didn't go to Yummy by Justin Bieber. Thank good God, I would have fucking screamed my head off. I would have, I don't even know what I would have do, done. But if that would have went to Yummy by Justin Bieber, ooh. If that would have went to Yummy, I, a. Hey. But yeah, one over Say So, Everything I Wanted, Don't Start Now, Cardigan. And watermelon sugar a again. This is another. This is another instance of, if the weekend was on this list, if the weekend was in these nominations, he would have swept the fuck out of all of them, including watermelon sugar. I don't care how fucking 
big watermelon sugar exploded in 2020. Blinding lights did even more. But yeah, yummy. That that shit was a fucking mistake. No, not even a mistake. It's just pettiness on the Grammys part. How the fuck are you even? Out of all the fucking songs out of Justin Bieber's catalog and his fucking discography, you decided to pick yummy? Shit, I would have been mad. I wouldn't even. I mean, I wouldn't even be as mad if it would have chose fucking intentions, which is not even good either. But yummy? Best pop duo group performance? Ooh. It went to Rain On Me by Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande, which I, I think I chose that. I think I chose that. And boy, the fucking armies. Ooh, I bet you they fuming like a muff. You know, you know armies. You know how scary they could be. Again, thank God it didn't go to Justin Bieber. I wouldn't have been mad if Exile won. I've eh, you know. Man, I'm kind of disappointed, but also kind of glad that it didn't go to BTS with Dynamite. Because if out of all the songs you decided to fucking nominate for a Grammy out of all of BTS's discography, you decided to pick Dynamite. I mean, I, I guess, yeah, it made the most impact in the industry of music, but and on the charts. Come on, Black Swan? How can you fucking nominate Dynamite when a whole Black Swan exists? When a whole blood, sweat, and tears exists? When a whole life goes on exists? I don't know what the fuck. Eh. Best pop vocal album went to Future Nostalgia. Thank God. Yeah, I think that was my pick, and I'm kind of, I don't know why the fuck Folklore is on here. It's, it's not even a pop vocal album. It's not even a pop album. It's a folk vocal album. It's a folk album. But okay. Again! Thank God it didn't go to Justin Bieber! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo! Best dance recording went to Kitchenada, as I was rich talking about earlier, featuring Cal Yuchis. I mean, I'm I'm not mad at it. I just feel like... I feel like Disclosure deserved it more, but okay. And then with Best Dance Electronic Album, again, I still think that Disclosure fucking body. Kaitranada. Best rock performance was Shamika by Fiona Apple. I like that. 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 Best rock album. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Still long overdue. Come on now. New Abnormal takes home the fucking best rock album. Thank God the Strokes won something. But god damn it, it was long overdue because I feel like they should have gotten a Grammy for goddamn Is This It and Room on Fire decades ago when they were actually in their prime and actually making the good good shit so i had not to acknowledge that i guess and fiona apple again with fetch the bull cutters i mean hey i understand i think i mean I'm, i don't know why slow rush is on here and i'm surprised chloe and that's another thing i kind of wish chloe and Haley. hey i forgot her name i don't know how to say her name chloe and Haley, you know took home a fucking grammy as they were already nominated as they're already nominated for best traditional R&B performance, which I think, which I think they did better, which I think they deserved more, and I feel like the song they did was better. I feel like the song was just straight up better in performance-wise. The vocals popped more. It did more like justice to the instrumental. And Chloe and Hale just knows what they're doing, you know. They just know what they're doing, but they still don't get the praise for it. But fuck it, I don't care. Best progressive R&B album went to It Is What It Is by Thundercat, and I feel like it should have went to Chloe and Hale again for uh ungodly hour but god damn it and best r&b album is the one that really ticks me off it's fucking bigger love by john legend come the fuck on did you even know did you be it fucking real again be real did you even know that john legend even dropped an album tell me did you did you even know that he even dropped an album last year because i sure fucking didn't compared to fucking Giveon. Compared to fucking Luke James, compared to fucking Gregory Porter, John Legend fell off like fucking years ago. Giveon w had way more original material to work with and fucking execute perfectly than fucking John Legend. What the hell? John Legend and Aunt, Cl and Aunt Clemens? The hell? Get the fuck out of here. That whack ass track with Justin Timberlake. And then best rap performance. Megan, again, Megan Thee Stallion takes it on with Savage, which I wasn't surprised by, uh, as I still think it should have gone to fucking at least Dior, or the bigger, no, actually no, I would have liked, I feel like the bigger picture was the, obvious, obviously should have won, actually. No, not obviously, I still like Deep Reverence, though. Deep Reverence by Big Sean should have been the winner, I don't give a fuck. Like, it serves way more purpose than fucking Savage. Even the fucking Beyonce feature as well. It still serves more purpose, especially Nipsey's verse. And especially with the bigger picture.
picture by Little Baby. We all know the message behind that one. Another one I'm happy for is Anderson Pack winning for uh, Best Melodic Rap Performance, which went to Lockdown. Take that, Laugh Now, Cry Later. Take that, Highest in the Room. Fuck that. Out of the five, this is obviously the better song, obviously. And it just feels like an, it just looks like it feels like an outcast compared to the, all these other songs. Best rap song went to Savage. It still should have went to Bigger Picture, but uh, again, like okay. Best rap album. And here's a problem with the Grammys. They really, ugh, goddamn. Even though I'm proud of Nas, I'm finally proud of Nas finally getting one Grammy for for once and not going Grammulous his whole career, even though it's way long overdue. He's way past his prime. It doesn't. Pr it probably doesn't even mean the same anymore. I mean, and that's the problem. King's Disease is not a bad record. It's obviously way better than his fucking last record, which I don't even, want to, I don't even know if I could call it a record. I think it's a tape, and it's just full of fucking unfinished demos. But th to this album, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad, okay? It's not bad. But... Is it better than fucking Alfredo by Freddie Gibbs, which is my pick, and the allegory, and a written testimony? Come on now, be real, all right? If we're actually being real and not being the fucking recording academy for one second, if we're being real, Alfredo would have won, and Nas wouldn't even have to be on this list in the first place with these other songs, with these other albums and other artists, had he had won a Grammy with his fucking magnum opus of Illmatic. And it was written too. It was just mainly Illmatic. If he had won for Illmatic, he wouldn't even, it wouldn't even matter anymore because he had won, because that was obviously the most, one of the most like influential and one of the most groundbreaking rap albums of all time, like of all time. And it's still timeless to this day. I still think it's better than the Biggie record, but. But that's a hot take, I think. Oop. Got y'all pissed off. Oopsies. But that's the problem with the Grammys giving awards so overdue. And that's the same scenario with the Strokes. If ha, ha, the Strokes wouldn't even have to be on this list. I mean, maybe he would have been in this list anyway with New Abnormal since it's still a good album. But if they would have won, is, is this it? It wouldn't even matter anymore. We wouldn't have to worry about the fucking Grammy. But in this point, it's just kind of, ugh. Fuck. Why? God damn. Why you do it now? Why'd you have to do it now? Out of all the years, out of all the albums of his discography, you decided to pick out to be nominated for a Grammy when you should have done that decades ago, when he was actually putting out really, really groundbreaking pieces of work. Anyway, fuck you, Alfredo should have won. Eat my dick. I'm surprised Colors didn't win anything. Colors should have won at least one. How the fuck did? Come on now. You just try, you're just trying to you're just trying to piss people off at this point, like you're just trying to piss off people at this point. Best folk album, surprisingly, best folk album for a name of an album called Folklore. Cher sure doesn't have it anywhere in the folk category, but instead tries to stick it into the pop category because it's fucking Taylor Swift. Nowhere in that album were there any pop elements. You just threw it in there because it's fucking Taylor Swift. Get the fuck out. Get the hell out of here, alright? And yeah, that's pretty much my whole spiel on the award winners. Now let's go on to the performances. And going back to the performances is really fucking... Just... Just fucking boring. Like, all the performances... No, not all of them. Not really. Nah, nah. But I'm a big... A massive majority of the performance were just flat out boring. Just adding nothing to catch on. Nothing to make iconic of. And pretty much that whole WAP performance is like, Oh, gotta piss off the boomers again. What? It's just wet-ass pine cones? What's your problem? The provocativeness is not even the problem. It's just the laziness of Cardi B and her fucking outfit, which she can't even be able to dance in, which is which is probably her stylist's fault. It just looks clanky as hell. She did, had to do all that fucking hard choreography in that goddamn Tin Man outfit. Everything about it just fell apart, including her fucking pre-recorded vocals, which she was not- which is obviously pre-recorded. She was not singing live at all, or rapping live at all, whatever you want to call it. Only Megan was the only one that was singing live. I wouldn't even be mad if she was doing very hardcore choreography at these parts, but she was just walking around, just laying on the fucking bed, in parts where she needs to rap. Just like, what's the point? Yeah, that has to be the worst, worst performance of the night. But hey, I gotta give it to Dua Lipa on her performance, though. The baby, what the fuck are you doing here? Get out. Get, get out! Get out! Dua Lipa literally went from... Come on, girl, give us absolutely nothing. To, come on, girl, give us everything. Whoa, what the fuck? She exploded in this performance. She went, 
off the rails. I guess that's what a whole bunch of internet slander and bullying does to the motherfucker. But rightfully so. Her fucking stage presence was absolute dog ass. Like, and I mean like ass mucus. But yeah, she came in with them live vocals and she did it. She did the damn thing. Outfits were surprisingly well done for Dua Lipa. And her stage presence improved too, which I love to see. Cause you know me, I love stage presence. She, like she really went in her disco bag, like disco, 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 disco ain't dead bag. But yeah, basically all I gotta say about Dua Lipa's performance, stream future nostalgia. Like I don't even remember the rest of the performances. I mean, Harry Styles performed Watermelon Sugar, you know, yeah, okay, yeah, fucking One Direction ass nigga. I mean, BTS, I forgot BTS even performed Dynamite, which I'm, again, I, I, it's another thing of, God damn it, Grammys. We get it. Dynamite is their biggest song, but can you just let them per perform another song? We They've been out here in this game for like three years in the U.S. Could just let them perform two songs at least. Life Goes On was a success too. Why the fuck would you let them perform that? Just let them perform a Korean song for once. But yeah, it's just... But yeah, that performance is literally just every other performance of Dynamite. It's just the exact same fucking thing with different costumes and different sets and backdrops and everything. And now Jungkook's hair is now blue. Oh, wow. The highlight of any of these performances, I gotta say, has gotta be Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars with Silk Sonic. Damn, dude, they really, they really carried the whole, the whole show on its back with that one performance alone and Bruno Mars's Little Richard tribute. Bruno Mars was on fucking fire. It makes sense. It's kind of refreshing to see Bruno Mars anyway. Be since we haven't seen him in such a fucking long time. He's literally been gone for four years. The radio's been missing Bruno Mars. The instrumentation, the choreography, just taken all back. Anderson Pack's Anderson Pack's drumming too. Like, god damn, we all know he's a great drummer, but dude, he was in his bag there. And just complimenting Bruno's vocals well. It just glides smoothly. Smoothly, smoothly. Who knew they could work so good together? I like. I didn't even think that they could work this good together. Like everything about that performance was just class, pure class. And Anderson Pax, and then Anderson Pax little come on over, baby. Say, uh, oh my God, Godly, let's go. Sheesh. And then Bruno's falsetto, and Anderson Pax little ad libs along with Bruno's falsettos runs. It's just, it's just good all around. Like, they knew how to take the stage and bring it back to the 70s and not miss a single beat. And I feel like they should win Album of the Year, even though they never released an album yet. <laughs> it's that good. Anyway, enough jerking off to Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack, Rightfully so. Uh, yeah, this this Grammy's fucking eight balls, you know? It, it nosedive. It would have been a whole different story if only The weekend wouldn't have been completely ignored, which is exactly what they did. They tried to pretend he didn't exist when they knew damn well he was fucking breaking records left and right with one song alone. Like, how the fuck can you even nominate Yummy, which Justin Bieber fucking went fuck, fought tooth and nail for no fucking reason just to get to number one, which still didn't go number one. Same with his whole album. His whole album flopped. For Justin Bieber standards, it flopped. Compared to a song that's not even left the charts since 2019, and it's 2021 and it's still in the top 10. What did you, what, what more did you want from him? That was obviously pettiness on his part, and thank God he fucking owned the Grammys in that, just that one tweet alone. And I also think Zayn, Speaking of One Direction, I also think Zayn is also on the same page as well, as he straight up says fuck the Grammys and everyone who is associated there. And I fucking agree. I can't believe I actually agree with anyone from a One Direction. Are you really surprised at this point with the Grammys? Mmm, I sure ain't. I'm not. I am not. I'm gonna say right now, I am not surprised. That's all I, that's all I have to say about the Grammys. Yeah. Cool, whatever. Let's just hope the weekend just starts. Let's just hope the weekend just started a thing where more artists are boycotting the Grammys because it's just fuck the Grammys, you know? So, bye. That's all I have to say. I'm out. Peace and fuck the Grammys. Eat my ass.